Alright and welcome back to part 3, measuring current on the DMMs again. Okay, last time we measured voltage, this time we're measuring current. And um, measuring current on a multimeter is done in a similar way to measuring uh, voltage. Okay, the only difference is, is when you insert your multimeter, you have to break your circuit. Okay, yep. You heard me right, you have to break your circuit. Reason why is if you built your circuit, okay, you've got your power supply connected, where is current in your circuit? Well, the current flows through your circuit, okay, it flows through components, not dropped across components like or flows across components like the voltage. Okay, common mistake, okay, when it comes to measuring currents for the first time, a lot of people put the instruments across components just as you would do it for uh, voltage. Well, in actual fact, you have to put your multimeter in series, okay? Because you want your current to flow through the multimeter and uh, into the rest of your circuit, okay? Current flows, okay? It's not dropped. Now, I'll take you through it on this multimeter first, just like before, and we'll move on to this one, okay? And, um,. Let's do some measurements. Right, and so we've got our circuit all built. Okay, same circuit as before. Let's flip the uh, power supply on. Okay, we'll set this to say. Uh, so we'll switch it off. Uh, we'll set this to 10 volts, um, just like before. Okay, so we've got 10 volts. We've got our two resistors in series. Our potential divider, as it were that we had last time for measuring voltages but this time we'll measure currents so how do you hook up your uh, meter well like I said this is how we do it so we've got our circuit diagram here that I've just drawn out current flows through your circuit okay so this is our current here arrow denoting the direction of current flow positives and negative okay our two resistors so current's going to flow through our circuit from positives and negative okay where do we put our meter? Well, we want to put our meter in here, okay? We want to measure current. So, like I said, you need to break the circuit. You need to break your circuit, okay? Open circuit. Insert your amp meter and then that's it in place. You've got your amp meter in series with your uh, circuit, okay? So, what we're actually doing here is we're measuring our supply current, okay? what we're supplying our circuit because it's the first component in the circuit in series with the uh, supply. Okay, and uh, we'll do that. So you have to break it, make an open circuit, insert your meter to close the circuit. Simple. Now then, let's do it on here. Our power supply is off, so it's uh, we can now start unplugging things. And what we want to do is on our multimeter here, uh, we want to measure uh, DC current, DC supply, DC current. So twist the range around to uh, DC amps, DCA, DC current. Okay, so there we go, Just around onto the range. Now on the uh, Beckman multimeter here, we've got it's not auto ranging like the fluke. So just like voltage, you've got the voltage range. Okay. Down here we've got our range for measuring currents. You can measure up to uh, measure around 200 milliamps, uh, a 20 milliamp range, and a microamp range. Okay, up to 200 microamps. So let's put it on a reasonable range. Let's do a mid range, say a 20 milliamp range, and uh, plug in our instrument. So what do we have to do? Break the circuit. Let me break our circuit, our supply which comes from plus, okay, so we've got plus here, down to here. This goes into our amp socket. On this meter you've got two amp socket, one for amps up to 250 milliamps, okay, it's actually written down here. All meters are all normally stated, well they can measure up to maximums down here, so this is your milliamp socket. Wanting to measure amps you would shift it over to the uh, 10 amp socket, okay, so you can measure up to 10 amps. So we want to measure in a milliamp range because we've got killer ohms for our resistors. We're plugging in some volts, we're going to expect milliamps, okay? If not, less than milliamp. 
micro into the microbes. So we've got get on a reasonable scale, plugged into a current socket. Now we need to make the circuit. So where have I got a uh, spare lead somewhere? I've got a spare lead. Um, mum, 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 mum. Yep, I've got a spare lead right here. And we go complete the circuit from the common socket. Okay. To the uh, bar, uh, circuit. Okay. So at the moment it's measuring zero current because our power supply is switched on. As soon as I switch it on, hey presto, we are measuring a current. And at the moment, if you can see that, I'm going to move that back a bit. It's actually measuring 0 0.40. Now this is on the milliamp range, so this is actually 0 0.4 milliamps. So it's 400 microamps that we're measuring. Okay, it's not amps, even though the socket says amps. We're actually on the milliamp range. It's measuring the millis. So 0 0.4 milliamps. If you want, you can try and uh, change the range to try and get a better reading. You take it down to the microamps range, since that was points of a milliamp, it's in microamps, but as you can see, it's actually over range. Okay, it's displaying a one. It's over range on so that's how Beckman displays it over range is a solid one with the a dot elsewhere. And on the 200 milliamp range, you can actually see you lose resolution because it shifts it across the screen. Okay, and it's actually 0.4, so we can see. So this range, which is a 20 milliamp range, what I originally had it on, and it's uh, 0.4 milliamps. Simple. That's how you measure current. You measure it in series. You break the circuit and insert the meter so that the current flows through the meter. Now. Let's uh, move on to um, our fluke meter. Does it do the same thing? Well, you would assume it does now. Here's our uh, fluke meter. So what do we do? It's auto ranging and our current is uh, ranges down the bottom here. So first of all, select it onto the uh, current range, okay? And we're measuring it in amps this time on the fluke, okay? Should be a big clue as to the range, okay? If it's on amps and these are its maximum, you can only measure into the milliamp region. So we may have a problem, but let's try it anyway. Uh, switch the power off before we uh, disconnect anything. Let's get rid of our Beckman and plug in our fluke, okay? Uh, it's measuring amps, you can see it's measuring it DC because it states DC. Again, it's auto ranging, it's just one scale to plug it into. And on this one, it's only got one amp socket, okay? It actually ranges itself. Brilliant. Even less sockets, even less worry. So, red goes to your amp socket, denoted by amps. And your, it, your current flows into the amp socket and out of the common, so it comes out of the common into your circuit. Switch power on. And immediately you can see a problem. Last digit. Okay, it's only oscillating around uh, one, <laughs> zero and one, nowhere near uh, 0 0.4 milliamps. It's actually only measuring down to the uh, milliamp. You can actually change the range if we want. So range it down even further, range it up. Doesn't make the slightest bit of difference. Okay. The current flowing in this circuit is uh, below the range of what this multimeter can actually measure. Now the fluke is a bad choice of measuring this particular current. So new meters don't necessarily mean better meters. Sometimes the older ones, the Beckman ones, which are over here, uh, do the job that a little bit best, better. And uh, hence that. Um, really highlights the fact of what I said earlier about having two multimeters, okay, even two different models of multimeter, okay, because you may want that extra range, okay, no one multimeter can do everything, okay, some of them are good at measuring high values, some of them are measuring good at low values, some of them are very good at measuring intermediate values, but not particularly good at the high and the low values, okay, so even though this is a nice expensive, okay, extremely uh, good quality multimeter, it's not good at everything. Just like this one, it's not good at absolutely everything. 
effects. This can measure higher voltages than this one, this can measure lower voltages than this one. Okay, moving on. There are some uh, problems with uh, measuring currents on multimeters, and uh, that's because they've got uh, shunt resistors inside the uh, multimeters. Now, I mentioned some shunt resistors in, in the introduction to multimeters and measuring current. Okay, there's actually a, a resistor between these two terminals, essentially. Okay, so the multimeter is actually measuring a voltage across this shunt resistor. And the little program inside is just performing Ohm's law, just to convert that measured voltage across a known resistor, a known load, to give you a uh, proportional a uh, current. So voltage is proportional to current. So if this is one ohm and it's measuring one volt, you'd measure one amp. Okay, it's it's a very simple calculation. Ohm's law is in everything, and uh, it's it's built into the uh, multimeter. Okay. But because of that little shunt resistor in there, that's a couple of ohms. Okay, now depending on which model and which make and what range of uh, multimeter that you actually go out and buy, that shunt resistor can be different values. Okay, it's going to be a very low value, but um, it's going to be there. It's an extra resistance that you're adding into the circuit, and that becomes a problem when you're measuring very. Uh, uh, measuring circuits with very low resistances. Okay, if these two resistances were one ohm, okay, let's get the whiteboard out and board uh, it. And as I was saying, uh, resist low value resistances can cause a problem in measuring current. Okay, why? Well, let's take this circuit here. Okay, which is the circuit that we've just been using. If, these, if this voltmeter has a shunt resistor and it is a uh, resistance essentially, okay, and let's call that say a 1 ohm shunt resistor and now you put a 1 ohm resistor in series in the circuit in order to measure your voltage across this, okay, in order to get a uh, current I, okay, it's, um, if this is 1 ohm, then it's just going to be uh, I is equal to V over R. If R is 1, then the current is equal to the uh, voltage. Okay. So this, if this is 1, it cancels. Okay. I equals V. Now, the problem with low values, I mean, this is just an example of 1 ohm, just to show you what happens. So, okay, they're all different values. Some really good quality multimeters have very low ones, some are very high ones, okay, and if some of them change your shunt resistor depending on the uh, the range that you're measuring. The range that you're measuring means that you, if it's a higher range it's going to dump more current through the meter, that's going to drop a little bit of power internally. The current increases, power increases, you don't want to damage the meter, so it comes a higher resistance, okay. There's a problem, okay. But uh, take it as being one ohm resistor. So if these are also one ohm resistors and this is say a uh, your voltage unit is 3 volts. Okay, these are all 1 ohm resistors. You end up with out without this first. Okay, you've got if they're both equal resistances, you've got 1.5 volts across each resistor. Okay, it's a one to one ratio. Okay, it's, it, everything gets halved. Okay, so you've got input 3 volts, 1.5 volts across each one. Problem. Introduce your one ohm shunt resistor. The circuit is now one ohm, one ohm, one ohm. These will no longer be 1.5 volts. These will be one volt, and this will be one volt lost in the meter by introducing this. Okay. Big problem. For example: If this was a a lamp, okay, and it needed say I don't know 1.5 volts to to light. Okay, and it had an internal resistance of 1 ohm. Okay, by adding in this one, okay, you no longer got 1.5 across here, you got 1 across here, 1 volt, it's not going to light up. So your circuit isn't going to work properly. If your circuit doesn't work properly, it's not going to draw the bright current, and the current what you measure is going to be wrong. Okay, you're going to get a huge error by introducing that meter, measuring the very low um, good circuits with very low resistances. The only way to combat that. Is to get rid of your uh, 
multimeter and do it yourself. Now the multimeter uses resistances to measure currents. Well, you've got resistances in your circuit, so you could just measure the voltage across the resistor and use Ohm's law yourself. V equals I R. So if you want to know the current? You V over R. Job done. Okay. And that is one of the problems with uh, using multimeters. Another problem is, okay, are uh, these things. Does anyone know what that symbol is? Okay, it's a fuse. All multimeters have fuses, okay, and they're used on the uh, when on the current range stop you from damaging your multimeter okay there's actually a fuse internal to your meter that'll be in series of your uh, shunt resistor let's say this goes off to your EDC okay this is your shunt you've got your two terminals here what do you measure your current with okay well uh, not there sorry over here okay so you've got this fuse. Problem is, this fuse, okay, when it blows, it's going to blow at open circuit. If you're measuring very low voltages, like on the fluke, okay, it's very low, it may be close to its range, you may take it to be zero, you may be expecting, say, one volt very close to the range, it may display zero, you think, oh, right, okay, it's almost zero, it'll be on the range. Or it's not come up with overload or anything like that. Well, the problem is it won't come up with overload because your multimeter doesn't detect a blind fuse. Okay. On the fluke one, you're lucky. These are actually very settable fuses. So if you do go and measure over current or anything like this, and it goes open circuit, you know. On the Beckman one, you won't. Okay. So if you're say doing your diode test. We've got our diode turn on here, measuring zero current around that region. Okay. As it turns on, you'll see a current, but initially you won't see any. But you won't know that your fuse is blown until you get around that region where you start, the diode starts conducting, so you may be taking false readings or an error. And so it can be a problem. So that's one to bear in mind. Just because your multimeter does display zero doesn't mean that it's, it has actually zero current. It may be a case of your fuse blowing in your multimeter, okay, and it is actually giving you a zero, and you should be able to tell whether it's blown or not, because your circuit's not going to work, so no current's going to flow in your circuit. Uh, it's just a, it's the point just to highlight, okay? There are fuses in multimeters, they do blow, and um, watch out for them. That is uh, measuring current. As I said, it's very easy. Voltages you measure across components, currents you measure, through components. Okay. Multimeters in series of current, multimeters in parallel for voltage. Next, uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a moan about um, multimeters and why I don't particularly like them measuring um, AC voltages. Okay, uh, see you in the next part.